it really well in low lights. I just changed to a darker version. I could see it really well. And it, it pulled a lot of yellow fish for me. And Herman was, well, he knows this fly pretty well. It's it's a staple fish killer. It, I used it on Stokefontein as well a lot this year. And it's, it did a lot of damage for me. So I've, I've got a full box of them now. So I want to show everyone else how good they are. Do you all get ones now? If you want, <laughs> they're very quick. That's the best part about them is they don't take long. The bubble back caddis. Yeah. So that's. A great that is introduction not up to stand. The fact that you should just have seen, I have met Renee Harrell and I've actually fished with Renee Harrell. He actually went on the river with Renee. Do you know? You guys know that Renee Harrell is a fishing god. That's how great this guy is. And this is his stand. This is insane. So I was I was lucky enough to spend a whole day drinking beer with him, and then ended up staying right, another nine days drinking beer with him. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone from that that part of Idaho Island Park is either a, a druggie or really enjoys their beer, or both. So. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't plan on it. There's too much fishing to be done. <laughs> There's a guy before Craig starts, and we had fishing stories and everything. Ducks and everything. I just wanted to tell you, right. Jeremy has brought what about the mag? Uh, yeah, yeah, the new Mission Fly mag, okay. which is uh, free in the shop, but we've got a whole pack, uh, pack here, so grab one. Yeah. Uh, it's also this is the the print version. The 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 you can go online to the Mission Fly mag. You the, the digital version is um, there's more content, uh, photographic content. They don't put all the photographic content in the, in the magazine. But uh, grab a coffee. This is coming to the end where it's where it's coming to the end of the hatching stage. So as it's broken the surface, and it's it's yeah you can fish it as an adult too, which is pretty pretty cool out of this fly. But Renee talks about it as fishing it through the last few stages of of emerging. And so when he puts float on this fly, so everyone thinks that you buy your float and then you just put it on the dry fly. Rene doesn't do that. Rene is very, very particular in where he puts it and how much he puts on. So with his CDC, that is his floatant. That's all he uses to float. The dubbing has, it's got floatability, but he doesn't like to put floatant on it. So he puts the floatant on the, the side of his hand and he turns the fly upside down and he puts the floatant on its back. So the fly sits pretty deep in the water and that's, that's one of his special ways of fishing it which a lot of people don't get to see and if you read it you won't really understand it until you've fished it and it changes the whole way the fly works in the water it's it's very it's an amazing thought process that 99 percent of people overlook so i was very lucky to see that and hope hopefully you guys will get to see what i mean later when i'll put it in a glass of water and show you show you what he means okay so let me start it. Cool, so this the stock standard is lay your your body of well your your thread layer. What size hook are you using? Uh, size 14 grip 11011 BL. Um, for yellow fish on the vol, I, I don't really recommend this exact model. Um, Hanak do a model and Tiemco do a model that's slightly thicker um, that I find to be a bit bit more suitable. But for Stoke Fontaine, this handles pretty well, but the moving water, I don't particularly like this one. But its shape is the right shape. That's okay, so I trim off the excess, and you can see I've just laid a, a, a flat body of thread. So now, the next step is you pull your, your mallard feathers out. So you just pull them out, just so you get them level. If you cut them at, the, at an angle, sometimes you'll get a few that are sitting off skew, and when you tie them in, it gives an uneven tail. So what, what I do is I pull them up and then try and level them a bit. So I've got them a bit more level. You can see they're still behind the hook. You can see they're still a bit skew. 
So now what I'll do is I'll trim them off. And I trim off quite a big clump because it adds to floatability when you need it. You can always pull them out. You can't always pull them in. So now what I do is I just slowly pull them up and try to get them a little bit more level. And then I grab onto the tips and I pull down and all the, all the, um, the shorter fibers will just pull out. And then you get a whole bunch that are more level. And that's, that's ideally what I want is I want level um, level level fibers. You can see there's a little, there's a few little stragglers on the side that I'll just pull off, and that thins out your tail until you get the right, the right density of tail. Okay. Now the next step that I do is I tie, in not a very long tail. Another thing that I've noticed is, in comparison to everywhere else in, in the world, South Africans tend to tie their tails a bit longer than everyone else, and I I don't understand why we do it and. I've started tying short tails and I feel it makes a fly look a little bit better. And all the Europeans have been doing it, now the Americans too. So now I just tie it down, a few wraps, look, look at the tail. <clears throat> now I don't want the tail going straight out the back, I want it kicking slightly down. So how, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to work my thread back a little bit to the bend of the hook where it bends slightly and it will push the fibers down a bit. Okay, so one, and you'll see there, now the fibers are down a bit. Now I'll just come back up a little bit. Okay, and then you just cut off the excess. You don't have to worry about the bulk on the body yet because your dubbing will, will straighten out the bulk. Okay, the next step is getting your CDC together. So, I go through the CDC first and pick out a few feathers. I try and look for a relatively dense feather for the, this style of fly. Um, these are really, really nice plumes that Hanman has bought for us. So I've just selected a few. I normally put three in uh, a size 12 and, and 14, I'll put three feathers in. Um, a size 16, I'll put two, and an 18, I'll put one feather in. So it's just as the fly gets, the hook, the hook size gets smaller. The, um, the wing gets a little bit more sparse. Makes sense. Okay, so now I'm just going to cover up my excess, go back down a bit, make sure it's nice and tight. And now I'm going to grab my feathers. And now I'm just going to line them up with each other. So I'm going to put them stem to stem just so they're, all the fibers are together and they're all facing the same way and it just it looks neat and, and refined. Okay. Now my next move, you can see I've got quite a big clump of CDC. So now I pull all my fibers down so I've just got the tips facing forward. Now this is going to help form your body. So now what I do is I, I measure it on the, the, on the hook, I tie it down, two loose wraps, one tight one, pull down, and now with your feathers, just pull slightly away, and they'll settle for you, until you don't have any near the eye, so you give yourself room to work with near the end of the fly. Now you just work, work your thread all the way back to where the tail is, and you've got your base done. You can do another wrap through to smoothen out the body, but that's not very important. That actually doesn't matter because you're going to cover it with dubbing anyway. So now, with the dubbing, you don't need to go thick with your, with your dubbing. You can see there's quite a lot of synthetics in here mixed in with the naturals. So I'm just going to pull it apart just so I can make it a little, make the body a bit more sparse and I can wrap it quite tight, quite tight. If you wrap it a little bit thicker, for our fishing it's not too important, but for the more particular fish, um, in countries where they are more hatch oriented, it does make a bit of a difference, but our fish not so much. So, if you just wrap it in nice and tight, you, you, with this dubbing you might get a few clumps of, um, of hairs here, of the actual natural hairs here that balls up, just pull it apart, it'll end up looking like that, just pull it apart and you'll be able to use it again. You can just dub it in. 
Okay. So now, with my dubbing ready to go, I'll just slide it right up to the hook and start my, my dubbing process. So, I just slowly work my way up with no... I'll, I'll get a slight taper, but no, nothing too, too extreme and nothing too noticeable. And now, I give myself a lot of room at the eye of the hook, as you guys can see. Because we still have another stage after that with, with mallard and dubbing. Okay. So now that we've got this part done, we bring the wing over, and you set your wing. So you can you can make your wing as wide, well as broad as you want it to be, or you can make it narrow, just by the tension you put on. If you pull it tight down, you're going to get a very very like tight wing, and it's not going to be very wide. But if you just push the wings back slightly, you'll see it, it forms a like a nice fat wing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in between that, I'm going to put it relatively tight, just like that, and just do two turns over, one, two, and then just pull it tight, and that will hold my wing in place. And now once you've done that, is you can actually push your wing down, you can push it around and it will flatten out and actually form a better bubble. Okay. So now I'm just going to cut off the excess. There we go. Don't throw this away, you can use this for all, all sorts of flies. Now I'm just neatening up the head, doing a few wraps over it, just making sure that the, that the wing doesn't come loose. So it's a pain once you've tied this fly and you're getting to your next stage and the wing just pops up then it's that's a nightmare. Okay. So now you've got that part done, you've got your wing all leveled out. Nice and nice and broad. And now the next part is your mallard again. So now what you want from the mallard is you want it coming out of both sides of the fly, but you want a quite a fair few of fibers spreading over the like the top and slightly down the sides. You don't want them all coming out directly below. Just want a full, a full circle. Okay. So now, once again, I've got my my mallard chosen, and I split the split two sides. So now that's pretty much even. So one side will go on on one side of the fly, and the others for the other side of the fly. So I'll split them up. Just trim them off. And you don't have to worry about lining them up with, with this style of fly because it's just now it's just uh, getting the legs on. So the legs can be pretty much any which way. Okay. So I'm just going to start off on the outside so you guys can see it. So you just get them not too long, so about as long as the, the bubble. And now you just pull them down a bit. Pull them around. Another turn, just for security. And now I get the other side. And do the same thing on this, on the other side. And then just do a few tight wraps just to make sure they don't come undone. You'll see they'll spread out slightly. You can pull them a bit out. And now the next part is trim off your excess. Okay, and just clean up your head. And now we're going to dub again. But this time it's going to be very, very fine. Yep. So just as you can see, it's a very, very fine amount. Well, it's a very, very tight um, dub, and it's very, very fine. You just try to cover up all, all the thread. And then. That's it pretty much done, just tying a little bit 
a little bit of thread in the front behind the eye. Nice and neat. Whip finish. There you go, that's all it is. Nice and simple. It's quite a once once you get the process it's down, it's a very quick flight to tie. Very, very, very effective on all of our waters because we've got a lot of caddis. It's just a great all round flight. You can tie you can tie it in very all different colours too, which is quite a, makes it quite fun. Cool. Cool. So with the floatant, now I don't have floatant with me, but another one of the American tricks is when they're drifting down the river and they lose their floatant, they've always got a backup. It's nose grease. So they take off the, the side of their nose, you, all, everyone has grease on there, and they'll just put it on the back of the fly, like that, on the, the CDC. So they'll just cover it up. And then what that does is now, when you fly, once you've put your fly in the water, the the um, the dubbing will get a little bit wet and it'll sit slightly deeper than if you covered the the whole thing with floating. So I'll, I'll get a glass of water and I'll put it in and, sh and show you what I mean. Because now I've put a bit on the on the wing. There we go. Now you'll see the wing will stay up but the body will get slightly soaked and sit slightly deeper. Yep, and the tail will also submerge slightly. Yep. And that's one of the deadly American tricks. I've seen a lot of hungover guys walk to the river rubbing their nose. <laughs> These big dry flies. <laughs> you put that on your rock ferrule as well. Yep, yep. Okay. So but, uh, um, I told my friend, okay, so you did aqua the it's Loxa. 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 Yeah. So if you if you want to apply it, you can't apply it to CDC. It will work. 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 It will <clears throat> it's really, really good. Uh, is it a gel? Yep. Yeah. yeah. But it's. The normal paste that you get, a floating paste, will actually. Yeah, ruin everything. If you put that, if you put floating paste, it will not the deal. And the cracked tops, too. Yep, very, very good, too. Oh, I like all of them. Yep. Pretty much all our waters, this is a really good. If you can see a fish, you can you can fish this, too. If he's feeding actively, you'll, you'll get a lot of fish on this. So, I, I prefer to look for feeding fish, for rising fish. Um, I'll do a bit of nymphing here and there, but I, I've done a lot of it over the time, so I'm trying to move more into the dry fly side of things. And I'll, <clears throat> I'll look for, for a fish that's either holding its line and feeding, which is not very common of smallmouth. They'll move around a lot. So I'll either try and spot the individual fish and fish it to him. And I'll put the fly, because a yellow fish moves so much more than a trout, I'll put the fly about half a meter in front of it in the direction it's going and drift it onto it, dead drift. And then late into the evenings, if you want to fish this and you can't really see it, cast it across the river through a big downstream loop and hold on tight and let the fly skate around. You get some really, really impressive hits doing that. It's just absolutely destroy the fly. It's quite exciting. You break off a lot, but it's really fun. <laughs> but yeah, I, I generally sight fish for this, so I'll try and find a single fish feeding and then work an approach to get to him and then normally yeah, half a meter to a meter in front of him. Um, I like this, but I prefer the either the dark the dark done so like a sort of slightly darker shade than the dubbing um, color CDC, and with that I'll put in a light olive um, a light olive body, and then the same the same color mallard. Um, if 
or there's an I like a, a cinnamon color, full cinnamon, everything cinnamon from the mallard being dyed cinnamon, the tail cinnamon, the CDC cinnamon, and the body cinnamon. That's another. An, I know Frontier had all of that in stock a while back, and that's one of my staples. Did, did I buy all of it? I might have. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much my. That's one of my standards. It's also a really, really good fly for Stoke Fontaine. If, if you're getting refusals, stick something like this on with 6x, and the fish tend to be a bit more confident. Smaller, smaller size. Yeah. Oh, well, this size, this is. You, you don't have to go much smaller than this. But if you do go 16, you don't have to go much further than that. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's pretty much it. Cool. Thanks, man. It's a pleasure. Uh, no, no, these are the ones that were brought. I just put them there so it wouldn't, wouldn't get blown around. Thank you. I'll get you another bit. I would love one, thanks. I'll find uh, three pedals each. Eh? Yeah. Thank you. Can you see it on this one? Yeah, I'm going to use the the density of the feathers is quite important. If you go too thin, you don't get the, the thick bubble. Mm.